Hello everybody and welcome to lesson three of this expressive skills unit. I would like you to recall all eight expressive skills. You have to at least be able to recall all eight um, and then we need to start recording all of the definitions. Uh, so pause the video now to recall all eight expressive skills please. OK, so let's look and have a look at where we've been, where we are now, where we're going. Uh, so we've learnt um, focus projection, spatial awareness and sensitivity to other dancers. Done. They should be filled in on your table. And um, today we're looking at musicality and phrasing. And then in the future, we're going to move on to communication of choreographic intent. Um, so how will this link to my wider learning? This will uh, deepen our learning of dance because we are learning the performance skills, understanding contemporary dance, understanding some stylistic features of contemporary. And today we're going to look at another um, pioneer in the American modern dance movement. We're going to look at choreographer Jose Limon. Um, now, last lesson we looked at Merce Cunningham. Um, so I encourage you to make sure that you're still reminding yourself of all of that information. And once we get back into the studio, we'll be actually practically exploring Cunningham and Lamone. Uh, this will broaden our learning because, of course, we're still linking to history. We're learning about the American modern dance history, where it came from, the origins. And we're still um, going to look at some different music. Um, which link to obviously the subject of music because John Cage, as we learned last lesson, um, was uh, the life partner of Merce Cunningham and their um, collaboration was about music and dance together. So for today, we are going to understand, define the expressive skills of musicality and phrasing. And alongside that, we are still uh, continuing our knowledge of American modern dance. And we're going to learn today about pioneer Jose Lamone. OK, so who is Jose Lamone? Um, we're going to do some independent research. So pause the video here. Take five minutes to go onto Google, onto his company website, onto YouTube to have um, a little uh, research of um, Lamone himself. And then you're going to watch video one, um, which is in the comment of this video. Um, so it's just a short video about his kind of life and upbringing. Um, so take 10 minutes or so uh, to do your own research and to make sure you've watched video one, which is in the comments of the description of this video, and then come back to this video to carry on and finish the lesson. OK, so hopefully you've just done some extensive research and watch that fabulous video. Um, so just to recap some of the key features about his life and his training, his upbringing. Um, so student of Doris Humphreys, um, he um, created a technique that fought against um, the classical ballet technique. Um, so like many of the modern dance pioneers, moving away from those rigid rules of ballet. Um, and he went on to become one of the most renowned modern dance choreographers, um, a main pioneer like Merce Cunningham. Um, so his technique, so simply called Limon technique, uh, the dance technique he created focused on movement of the breath throughout the body, uh, the dynamic use of weight in each body part and the fluid succession of one movement into the next. It, for me, is such an enjoyable style and technique to actually dance because it's such a release based um, style and technique and it, it really feels good to dance. Um, so when we're back in the studio, we will be experiencing this. Um, some key concepts to think about. So lots of the movement has elements of fall and recovery, rebound, use of weight, suspension, succession and isolation. So it's a truly freeing um, technique style. Um, and it's about how the body feels within the body rather than how it looks for a final performance. And he was a strong believer in the use of breath um, to enhance the movement. He considered that breathing was indispensable because it allowed movement to flow continuously and to start from the centre of the body. 
Okay, so we've learned a lot about um, modern dance and we've con continued to learn about Lamone there, his technique um, and him as a pioneer. Um, so we're now going to move on to our expressive skills and we're going to fill in our table that we're going to add to obviously you should have had a table that has already filled out focus projection uh, sensitivity to other dancers and spatial awareness so today we're going to do musicality phrasing so that is where you write the definitions there on the left then in the middle we have the importance and then on the right there we have how to improve so pause the video now if you need to just sketch out that table Okay, um, let's go for phrasing then, defining phrasing, the way in which energy is distributed in the execution of a movement phrase. So this is one of the hardest um, expressive skills to get your brain around. And it's actually so much easier if you have a practical example of this. Um, I'm going to try my best to describe it verbally. Uh, but when we get back in the studio, it becomes so much clearer what phrasing is when you actually have um, a movement phrase and you do change the energy in it. Um, however, so if you think about a movement, um, actually, let's we come on to this in a second. So let me just go through this this slide and then I'll explain it. Um, so simply the definition. Um, so what it involves is music dynamics, energy and pace. So let's put this into our table. So the definition is the way in which the energy is distributed in the execution of a movement phrase. And here's my little description. Um, performing a sharp turn into a slow kick. Now, those are dynamics. However, if you think about the energy it takes to do those dynamics, um, phrasing is about where the peaks and valleys are, where the energy is in the phrase. And you can always change the phrasing of something because you can change where the accents and where the energy is. Um, like I said, quite hard to verbally describe, but hopefully that makes a bit more sense. Um, and I will show you practically in the studio when we get back. Um, so how we improve phrasing, we practice with a range of dynamics, changing up the dynamics to change up the energy and phrasing, uh, lots of repetition and lots of rehearsal to master it as a skill and change where the energy is in the movement. Um, important, so it enhances choreography, adds excitement, shows highlights, so helps the choreographic device adds light and shade and can add contrast to a piece. Pause the video now and complete all of this into your table, please. OK, on to musicality. Um, so defining it is the ability to make the unique qualities of the accompaniment evident in performance. So. All those layers in the music, can you show me that through your body movements? Quite a difficult skill, but once it is mastered, it takes you to that next level as a dancer. Um, and musicality can involve, obviously, the beats, the pace, the structure, the instruments, uh, the dynamics and the time. Um, all of those things are going to incorporate into musicality. So let's fill in the table. So make sure you've written the definition down. Um, and my little example is a very, very simple example. But if you can imagine like three um, unique kind of drum beats, one after the other, and then um, you would perform a different pose on each of the three drum beats. I mean, that's super, super simple, but just want to make sure that it's clear in your mind that you're making the unique qualities of the music i.e. The, the layers, the notes, um, and you can make that through your body. You can transform that music into your body to make it evident. Um, again, another skill that might be easier for me to show you what musicality is if we choreograph something together um, and showing you that in the studio might make sense a tiny bit more. Um, so how we improve musicality. Uh, so we listen to music and unpick the different layers of the music and um, lots of rehearsal. Adding challenging counts to choreography is going to make um, if there are challenging layers in the music, matching those up. 
um, filming yourself and watching it back um, would also help to improve it. Okay, importance. It will enhance your choreography. It will add connections between movement and music, obviously. Uh, it will be able to show a narrative more clearly and will add interest to um, the audience. Um, so again, you know the drill by now. Pause this now um, to fill all of this into your table. Okay, just to finish off, we have a one to five quick um, quiz. Um, so just one to five on a scrap piece of paper if you have a whiteboard or anything. Um, pause the video now to answer these and then the answers will follow shortly. Okay, first up, the definition of phrasing. So the way in which the energy is distributed in the execution of a movement phrase. Number two was to define musicality. So the ability to make the unique qualities um, of the accompaniment evident in performance. Uh, number three, um, defining sensitivity to other dancers. So awareness of and connection to other dancers. Uh, number four, um, spatial awareness. So you can, why it's important is that you will reduce the chance of injury. And an example of projection, I've just popped in there. So kicking your leg out to the front whilst lifting your chest and chin and sending energy to the audience. So clearly an example of a movement where the projection is evident in that. Obviously there's some, with four and five, slight alternatives. Um, so you might need to rewind the video just to check some of your answers. Um, that's the end of the lesson today. Well done, everybody, and I will see you next lesson.